What's up, guys, and welcome to another episode of The Positive Pathway. Today I have a very special guest, he's Sin. Sin works in the digital transformation space. He helps businesses to increase their sales and strengthen their brand awareness. He is also a qualified fitness trainer, youth empowerment advocate, a martial artist, and an actor, a man after my own heart. Welcome to the show, Sin. Hi, thanks for welcoming me. It's an thanks honor for, to be here. It's a pleasure, actually. Yeah. Thanks for coming on the show. The pleasure is all mine. Yeah. Now, I, I love the diversity of all of your skills, Sin. So um, perhaps you can share a little bit about yourself with the viewers. Hi, okay. So actually, I came from a background of a very negative family where everything is just literally whatever you can think that is negative. So growing up in this family, I thought to myself, I realized I'm getting very frustrated, actually very often. And I realized, why am I like this? Why is my family actually, the mindset is so negative. So I went to research a lot about human beings because I really look up to Bruce Lee and he's someone who is actually very free, not just physically, but mentally as well. And the way he did it was he talked about how humans have pride and ego. It is something that should be actually thrown away because I understand how people say it's like, take pride in whatever you do, but actually instead of taking pride, you should have self-esteem in what you do. Instead of pride, pride is easily hurt. Bruce Lee says pride is the core of self-rejection. So if you have pride, it means you haven't really accepted your true self. So growing up in this family, I actually researched about human beings, about their pride. So whenever I encounter, I actually start, started studying people more outside, where whenever I see people who are angry, their facial expressions, I'll think, especially when I encounter problems, especially in school, where they have fields with each other, like arguments, I would always think through different perspectives and think of how, why, why are they actually feeling like this? So normally, everything boils down to the acceptance. So they did not want to accept about each other's mistakes or what they did wrong. Yeah, so a little bit of my, about myself. I actually studied engineering backgrounds. So the reason for the diversity of skills is before, before all my studies, I actually, during my studies actually, through primary school, secondary school, even ITE, and I eventually went to NAFA, was that I actually learned martial arts by myself. I took classes online through YouTube, not actual classes, yeah, through YouTube I learned. At first, my friend was practicing Wing Chun, so I got into Wing Chun a bit, because Ip Man, right, I watched Ip Man, like Donnie Yen, I look up to all of them because of their action films, their stunts, and especially their crews, like Jackie Chan, all this. So in the end, I learned Jikundo because I wanted to really learn how to defend myself outside because we never know what will happen. Self-defense is more of a lifestyle. It's not just something you practice to get into trouble with. It's something that you practice so that you'll be ready to use it anytime you want. And, and with and learning... The, sorry, sorry. Sin, for the viewers, that's Bruce Lee's style, isn't it? Yeah, that's Bruce Lee's style, Jikundo. He created himself the way of the intercepting piece. So, because when I learn martial arts, right, martial arts links to all sorts of stuff. You don't want to just use martial arts for self-defense. You want to show the world what you can do, just like how Bruce Lee did. So I really wanted to get into film. So I actually, I went to ITE because I really wanted to get out of the secondary school life, right? I got, I got about 17, 16 points for N level so that I can jump to high night tech so that I didn't have to go to SEP 5 and take O levels because it's another waste of a year in secondary school. I, want, I just wanted to get out of it. But in the end, when I went to IT, I don't know, the lifestyle there is just so limited. I realized I regretted going to IT because all I did there was sleep in class because I wasn't really interested in what they do because they offered really little courses for high night tests, especially when you jump from N level to high night tests. It's all just engineering. Like there are only a total of 17 courses I still remember. Yeah, so I actually joined MMA CCA in IT. 
I went about less than a month and I realized the training there wasn't really suited for me. It's like what I did was so much more efficient because it, it really boils down to the research you do based on the training and how it applies to what you do. But their training is really like a boot camp. It's like they just do the training to make it tough for people instead of how pliable it is and eventually when I graduated I didn't want to go to army because I really wanted to study something that can help me when I wanted to pursue a career in film and drama so I went to NAFA. I actually wanted to go to La Salle but I couldn't find anything that teaches me acting except for the film so actually you will learn more on camera and video editing side. I didn't want that I wanted to do more on the performance side so I entered NAFA which eventually one day actually right now the one interviewing me is one of my teacher I was Stuart student once he was a great teacher he taught us a lot of things and I didn't know he was was it Aikido yes exactly. yeah dude, he, he learns Aikido which is amazing it's like I really respect people who learn martial arts because martial arts is a discipline it's more of a mindset instead of just the moves it really helps you lift your spirits up yeah so i also did a lot of part-time work which i wanted to explore what i could do so i did like packaging factory work waiter retail outlets eventually a bartender but i realized all these are really short term in the long run you will just be stuck in this job you would, i do not want to live a life like having to go to work every day and coming back home to train. I wanted to live a life where I could have income and I could do what I love. I could spend time with my family, friends, and really, spend, like, if I work, I have the money, but I have nowhere to spend. So if I have an income that doesn't require me being there physically present, I could spend the money on exploring more into martial arts. Like, I could, no matter how old I am, I can go and join some Muay Thai class, boxing class, maybe pursue a career as well. I actually wanted to be a professional fighter last time, but I realized I've been training three hours a day, realizing that I'm going nowhere because I'm not actually a professional athlete. I, I'm still studying because people who actually train three hours a day, four hours a day, they are people who are competing, who are actually athletes with a coach to support them. Yeah, so I eventually went into entrepreneurship, which I discover a lot of pain and hardship because I went into a sales line and I realized how hard sales is. It really teaches us a lot of skills, especially when you face a lot of rejections in real life. You really have to, a lot of people got pulled back by sales because how they face rejections and they lose belief in themselves. They suddenly, I don't know, they just lose how, they, they lose their will to continue. It's Which worse, is why, worse than being an actor, isn't it? There's yeah, more rejection so, in sales than acting. Yeah. Actor is like, you can go for auditions or this, but yeah, actually we face rejection in every aspect of life, not just sales. But sales, especially when I went into sales with no experience at all, I was trying to sell a high ticket item, which there was a lot of value, but I just couldn't deliver the value to people as I was still young and what I was selling was really high ticket. So I got no results and eventually I got a bit, how to say that, I was a bit upset. I, I, didn't, I didn't know what I could want to do. It's like, do I want to continue this? And then I realized businesses, you take at least five years or one to five years compared to just working on a job, you could work for about 50 years, still receive the same income. But businesses, if you are not willing to spend one to five years to build up the business, build up your brand, especially the income, at the start might be, you have no salary, might, be, might, might not be what you want, but we have to look long-term. I'm not saying we should like not work at all. You could have a part-time job and work on your business. So eventually I met a bunch of friends and I have a mentor there. So I, they created an agency, which is just starting of this year or a bit end of December 2019. They, 
we created this agency where we could help F&B businesses, any, any form of businesses. We provide lots of digital solutions, advertising to help solve problems because we know that we actually wanted to launch this like way after maybe August, but actually COVID hit. And we know that businesses are suffering, like they are struggling to keep up with the time, especially those who are older, especially like hawkers who do not have online presence as well. So we wanted to help them to be able to reach out to customers other than just them being walking down and seeing the banner signboard. We wanted more to know about them. So having an online presence is like separates you from your competitors. It's just like personal branding. So I can be a personal trainer and someone else can be a personal trainer, but who does better is who having an online presence, like a branding that people know and they trust instead of you are a new personal trainer, even though you have the certificates, but they don't really know you. So it's like, some trainers, they complain about how, you know, those trainers on YouTube who are really not qualified at all, the skills they give uh, or knowledge they give is really misleading. But we can't disagree that what really works is how they are so successful, even though their knowledge is not that good, is how they are able to market themselves well and brand themselves and deliver what the audience wants. Yeah, so that's personal branding. So even though their knowledge is not good, but it's content that people want, yeah. So I discovered that online presence is something businesses really need. So I decided to stay with this agency to help, even though I don't earn much, but it's more of a value providing solutions, yeah. So that's- and I, I know more. that you're a, a strong advocate of positivity. Um, when, you're, uh, when you're working with your, with your marketing clients, you like to incorporate that into your uh, your strategies, don't you? Yes, definitely. We because we did, we know that how to say in marketing, right? I came across this video where businesses is not about profits. If you create a business and focus on a profit, in the long run, you wouldn't actually make much of a difference. Maybe in your wallet or your bank account, but after a while, you realize that you're not happy, you don't know what your focus is, you don't know what your purpose is as well. And they, they talk about how in business, we are solution providers. We created this business because you wanted to help people, you wanted to give people what they want and what they need. And instead of ROI, return on investment, it should be return on intentions. So what you want to provide value to people, eventually profit will come instead of creating a business for the profit, you create a business for the people. Yeah, so a business is to serve and profits will come, yeah. Yes, it's good to have strong relationships, isn't it? And then yes. you've got reoccurring business, isn't it? Definitely, recurring definitely. Business. And uh, on a personal front, uh, what do you do practice each day to stay positive? I'm, I'm, I'm guessing you do a lot of exercise. Uh, and, yes. uh, and also, how do you deal with overcoming obstacles? Okay, the first thing I do is, what really helps me a lot, I, w I wake up every morning, the first thing I will do is, actually really funny, I actually shout to myself, like, I will say, the moment I get out of bed, I will make my bed and I will shout, like, let's go, you know, you wanted to, like, conquer the day. You don't just want to wake up, brush your teeth, and feel restless. You wanted to really lift yourself up, and vo your voice actually helps, because when you let out a raw, like, a roar or shout. In Chinese martial arts, they like to do the roars, right? Like they shout to give them yeah. energy to raise their spirits. It actually helps to like disturb your mind. Especially, especially when you just wake up and your mind doesn't know what you're doing. When you give it a positive boost, it will actually become more energetic. So you are ready to conquer the day. So I actually came across this book by Robin Sharma about the 5 a.m. club. I don't really actually wake up 5 a.m., but I use it because you do what works for you. you it doesn't have to be 5 a.m., maybe 6 or 7 a.m., 8 a.m., where they break down your morning into this 20-minute block. It's a three blocks of 20 minutes, which makes up 60 minutes an hour. So the first thing you do in the morning was 
meditate for 30 minutes. But I get some people might find it hard to meditate. So I actually started last time five minutes first, then slowly increase 10 minutes, 15, 20. So the thing about meditation that a lot of people did wrongly is they meditate and they think. What meditation is used is for you to be clear of your thoughts. A true form of meditation is when you have no thoughts at all. So that's how, that's where you really control your mind. And what I actually personally, instead of doing meditation like others, where they have no thought at all, I will do about 15 minutes having no thoughts. And at the last five minutes, I'll actually do affirmations, which is really important because you, you want, you really need to believe who you are. So I will tell myself that instead of saying stuff like you want to become, you want to make a difference to the world or this, which is too far-fetched, you should work on yourself personally. I will say, I am positive. I am strong. I am alive. That's the most important part. I'm alive. I'm the best and I can make it. So I will usually say this to myself in the morning. And what works more is when you look at the mirror and say it to yourself. That's crazy. It actually works so that it's like, if you look in the mirror and tell yourself, who am I? It will raise a lot of questions. So you have to look at the mirror and give yourself affirmations of who you are. And it really works because you will create a belief, where, especially when you get used to it. And when you tell yourself, I'm the best, not necessarily means that you are better than people because eventually they will create more problems where you would refuse to accept that you are less than people. Instead, when you say I'm the best, it will be more like how I'm better than myself yesterday. You want to improve yourself and become the best version of yourself day after day. That's, that's what I'm the best means. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So these are the practices I do every morning, which really helps me a lot. Yeah. Sounds fantastic. Uh, they're really good ones. Yeah. And what about uh, overcoming obstacles? Oh yeah. Uh, do you, do you turn your negatives into positives? I would say, because what, there's a lot of misconceptions about positive thinking. I kept telling people to think positive. They would say, no, her thing, it doesn't work. Staying positive is useless. But there's a fine line between staying positive and trying to avoid your problems. A lot of people, when they say positivity doesn't work, is when they try to think positive. It's like whenever something bad happens, they say, stay positive, stay positive, the good will come. It's kind of like avoiding the problems. Where Because our mind works in a way where we have the most rejections when something happens, and you try to say the opposite. So when the negative happens, the more you tell yourself, I am positive, I am positive, your mind will work in a way that you are not positive. No, you are not. Because your mind will fight with what you say. So that has the most restrictions and struggle. That's why affirmations are best done where there is least restrictions, which is in the morning and before you sleep at night. Yeah, so positive thinking is more like when something negative happens, you embrace the negativity and adversity and tell yourself, ask yourself questions, what good would happen if I overcome this obstacle? Instead of just saying, oh, it never happened, stay positive, which really doesn't work. The mind will fight back. Instead of trying, yes, this is, this is a bad thing, it's negative, and I should overcome this and find the good in it instead of just avoiding it by staying positive. Yeah. I yes, find there, are, there are often opportunities, aren't they? There is a lot. It's how we see and how we discover the opportunity. That's why we have to keep our mind very open. Yeah. And I understand you're an Anthony Robbins fan. Is there a particular message of his that resonates with you or perhaps a particular book? Anthony Robbins, there's one book that really sticks close to my heart is his book, Awaken the Giant. I can't really remember it. Maybe it's Reawaken the Giant. It's like a book where he summarized about the actual book, which was really long, a very thick book. He summarized into a few hundred pages. What I like about Anthony Robbins is how he, as a speaker, he connects with the audience, not just physically and emotionally, but spiritually. And how he says that we can be whoever we are, whoever we believe 
and we can have whatever we want. We can do whatever you want to do. Because our brain is created with a system that we can program ourselves. People say change, people are afraid to change immediately is because of their beliefs. For example, if a close ones, a close one of mine left the earth, people will scared that changing immediately will mean that it never happened in the first place, which is not true. You can change overnight. It's just whether you really want to change or not. Because changing is really for the better. You do not want to. They think that changing immediately will be you don't remorse at all. You don't even care about losing a loved one. Where is it really so? It's changing is for yourself. Yeah. So what Anthony Robbins preach and does and believes is really something that I believe everyone should adopt. Yeah. His practices. Well, there's a reason he's so popular, isn't it? Yeah, definitely. <laughs> well, uh, thank you so much for your insight today, Sin. And I've put a couple of links in the description. So if people want to find out more about you, they can. And th again, thank you so much for being on the show. I'm most thank grateful. You for having me. Yeah. Thank you for having me. Thank you, Sin. So that's all for the show today, folks. If you liked the video, please subscribe to the channel. Uh, if you have any suggestions for what you'd like to see on the show, please place it in the comments. I'd love to know. And remember, respect one another. Bye for now. Respect.